Okay. So I'm going to present a T-Rex, which is a stateful traffic generator that we created. Um, and let's see. So just to give a context, we are developing in Cisco the packet inspection. And for many type of network element that is suspected traffic, right? We talked about deep packet inspection before. They are super complex and there is a need and to get performance number and understand bottleneck. Oh, yeah. And to understand bottleneck, there is a need for realistic traffic generator. Now when I say realistic, it means that you need to create a traffic that simulate the same traffic that you expect in the real life. Many clients talking to many servers with many layer 7 applications. Not just bumping packets. You need something real. Now for that, you need the... And, and, and the reason for that is that the, 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 um, the feature is inspecting the payloads, like the regex and the flows and clients and this is complex, and you need this realistic traffic. So what is the problem? Let's see what is the problem. The problem is that there is traffic, realistic traffic generator that they cost a lot. And if you want to scale them, it's ridiculously expensive. Like millions of dollars for 100K dollar is for five gig. But in our case, we have an SR that can scale to 200 gig in deep packet inspection. So we couldn't test it. And another problem that probably many of you have is the flexibility. We couldn't control the traffic generator. Every feature has its own type of problem. One feature can have many DNS. One feature has many server and socket cache. And you want to control it. You want to, to be flexible in the, in the in the generating of the, of the traffic. So the implication is, of course, the quality, limited testing. In some case of a scale, we didn't test at all. Yeah, it sounds bad that this was the case. So the, 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 how, how did it solve it? We created an application on top of DPDK. We use a Cisco UCS and Intermix, and we can now can scale it to 200 gig. Now, the principle the key principle of the software is to be modular and to do only what is needed for the feature. Not everything like Spire and Elixir, just what is needed. And in case of <coughs> deep packet inspection, only replay <coughs> was needed. In case of NAT, only learning from the first packet was needed. So in a modular way, we could scale to 200 gig with one UCS. Then he told me that it could scale to, to one terabit with five UCS to test his, uh, his chip. So on top, because we are using DP, uh, DPDK, we could create an uh, open uh, an open software and uh, and virtualization uh, image that uh, that can be used. And we created for day one very easy installation, both for for bare metal and for uh, OVA or virtualization. So this solves the problem. So let's let's get uh, deeper into the model of traffic of the traffic. T-Rex is both acts both client and server. This simplifies the software a bit. For, for example for measuring latency and so on. So <laughs> on one hand we have the clients and we can define a pool of many types of pool of, of client and the distribution of the clients. What's the range of the IP, what is the top client, etc. Another thing is that we have the application. There are seven applications, it could be complex layer seven application with emulation layer. We don't do all the the complexity of real application. We do only what is needed. And another thing is the servers. The server there is a distribution of the servers and, and everything is defined in a YAML file. It's like XML file, but in, in, in a way that you can edit. And there is, by the way, a script that can build this YAML file automatically. And T-Rex can read that, process that, and, and run it. So just <coughs> highlight, because we don't have a lot of time, 
of the of the internal uh, implementation. So the lower level is DPDK, it's K, a linear with, with many number of core. We can choose the number of data path core. There is core zero is the master, is the and there is another call for uh, getting the Alex packet that we are using flow director to filter most of the packet, only the important packet are getting in, and still we, get a, we have a statistics per flow. Everything is flow based or, or template based. <coughs> we can generate and we can scale all of them. Templates, we can scale to 1K templates, and by that we can have re really realistic traffic, we can replicate the real traffic. We can uh, scale with to 200, 100K clients and 1 million servers. And from feature perspective, we measure GTL latency and flow order of each uh, packet. We, can, uh, we have flexibility in client and server generation, as I said. And we can learn NAT, IPv6, tunnels. And from user interface, we have a uh, Python API to automate all of this for uh, for the dev test guys, and there is a benchmark automation <coughs> script, and th there is minor uh, GUI to show all, all the things in real time. So this is the basic. The basic thing is one flow. This is one flow with four packets. The, the, this is the first in flow packet. So the user can define how many connections, how many connections per second he wants. And you can define, you can zoom in into each packet and you can define the inter packet between each packet or can take it from the application that was captured. So let's give a very simple example. This is the simplest, this is the low world <coughs> of the templates. Okay, we have one cap file, DNS with two packets. I can point to this pickup file here and I can say I have this number of client talking to this number of servers and the other thing is not important. Let's see what happens if I run it through simulation. So I can see that <coughs> these are the clients going up, these are the servers going up, and if I have a chart of it, you can see that this is the flows, by the way, this is the time. You can see one flow and then another flow. You can see a spike here, right? This is not a bug, this is a feature. <laughs> And this is another, another example with two pickup files, two templates, two simple templates. I can now mix HTTP request server and client and DNS, and I have only 10 clients here and three servers. <coughs> and then this looks like that. You see that the HTTP somehow randomly get into them in the middle, and I still have 10 DNS flows and two HTTP because this is what I requested. I, I put in the connection per second two for the HTTP and ten for DNS. You can have the request response work. Everything, everything mm -hmm. works. But again, for feature that terminate TCP, it won't work. It work only for feature like debugging inspection firewall that inspect traffic and change minor things into the pack. So actually, this is I, I talked to Vincent. This is one of the biggest things in the, in the package. This is how Cisco is testing. This is the benchmark. It's called SFR. Okay, this is an enterprise traffic profile. I won't say why it's called SFR. <laughs> but you can see that it's enterprise traffic profile. It's got, it includes video, RTP, browsing, HTTP GET, HTTPS, uh, mail, exchange. And there is, it's include complex application that has dependency between control and data, like RTSP, and we have plugin that emulate only what is needed for that. This is how the YAML looks. I simplified it a bit. And this is how the simulation shows the packet. Each, each color is a different application. Okay? So this is just, and this is because I don't have the time for a demo, this is my killer demo. And um, when I show it, so with the demo is I, I have an old UCS connected to the ASR 1K, it is the IN, it's, on, it's not fully populated, and it supports 100 gig of uh, traffic, and it services 
So you can run firewall, NAT, deep packet inspection, our component, and we and we had back then we had a customer case with latency and all this project all of these projects started from here. So when I run T Rex is a is a command line, you give the profile, the YAML file, and it's running and show you like something like that and there is a query to show you. But the important thing, you can see that I asked 25 gig of SFR. I see that the T-Rex is in 41 CPU utilization. It can handle 50, 15 gig per core. And I ask NAT translation. There is no error here because the router is configured only to do routing. Only to do routing. So everything is, looks good. This is the latency. You see that the average latency is 61. The maximum is 144. And the jitter is uh, 13. There is a difference between the client side and server side because there are, you can see here that there, there is more download than upload, which, is, which makes sense. And, there, and I ask to check the flows. So there is no error. Here. Now come the interesting part. What would happen if I enable some feature on the router? So this is the GUI. It's the same thing. There is a GUI for the latency, the histogram. This is per template. I can see all the information and the 25 bit. So now I configure NAT and firewall. Let's see what, what happens. When I run the same scenario, I see that the, it's not 25 anymore because there is a lot of drop in the sync pipe. And there is no feed. And there is a lot of latency. Here, an error here. Actually, I've asked this uh, guy that wrote this code not to fix it because they ruined my demo. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is how it looks like in the real time. By the way, this is our first bug. Because of that, we developed that. We had latency issues. The customer complained about latency, and we, and we didn't do. We didn't know what to do. So we developed this tool for that. So. <coughs> Another thing, so this is the roadmap, and close. This is the roadmap that we have. So, in a way, we started with stateful, simple, because there is no TCP start and no other feature. So, we have two things that we need to do. One, from the stateful, we need to add a TCP start, we talked about that, uh, something scalable TCP start. For the reason is that we want to check some feature that terminates. TCP. And for that, the client side is different than the server side. Totally different types. And the light application SDK API. Currently, the API is internally, the plugins are internally inside the T-Rex. And we have been asked to add stateless support for XCLI screens. So if you had the ability to add screen, super screen, and get statistics per screen. And I agree for that, because most of the most of the users in Cisco doesn't care about stateful. They care about stateless. They have routing and switching. This is their main uh, cost reduction. Another thing that you can try T-Rex, you can download an OVA for VirtualBox and run it on your VirtualBox and play with it from functionality point of view. So it's, because it's DPDK, it's very easy to play with it. So Two click, you can download it, play with the functionality, create the file, create, run the GUI, and etc. This is the links. We are in GitHub, it's open source, lately open source. There is a manual presentation and there is a website. That's it. Quick, quick question Why 10 times the number of servers as clients? Why? Why? Why 10 times the number of servers as clients? You said you support 10K, 100K clients and 1 million servers. Good question. <laughs> because for clients, we need to save bits for each port. Right? When we are generating ports, when generating tuple, we save the information which port was used, not to repeat. For example, if you have very flow, very long flow, this port that you consume was used by the. We are emulating the, the, the socket. Uh, we are emulating the socket, so we, we need to save information for the client. 
And for the saver, we, know we don't need to save information unless we have a bundling. So there is trade-off in this uh, implementation. Yes, yes, sir. I'm not going to ask for open source, but did you, tr did you try to, to use it with Shaker in OpenStack? Because that would be a nice tool to, to benchmark so many of the use cases. What you know? do you mean? Checker Ch is a... Is a Check, check theorem again? Ch checker, checker. C-H-A-K-E-R. No. Uh, okay. Let's take off and uh, yeah? take really it. Nice. Other questions? Yes, open source. Oh, you can download it. There is a package that you can just download and run it. You don't need to compile it even. Okay. Why does it push YAML profiles back to HANA? Exactly. <laughs> how, do, how does it compare to MoonGen? Um, it's different because this is, uh, this is realistic and MoonGen is not realistic. Alright, thank you, Hannah.